The officers of the 5th Brigade had assembled that Friday afternoon for their briefing, their final O group, before they in turn went out to brief their men. Brigadier Tony Wilson began. First of all, I want to make absolutely certain that you're right up to date on our own deployment. There have been some min minor changes, and we have moved some people around. And therefore, to get a common start point, you must know exactly where everyone is and what their orders are for the next 24 or 48 hours. Having then, as it were, set the scene, we'll look then at Commander Land Forces Falkland Islands intentions as far ahead as we can see them and what his directive to the two brigades has been. I'll then tell you what three commando brigade are going to be doing and how they intend to set about it. And then I'll turn your attention to this brigade and tell you what five brigade is going to do and exactly how we're going to set about that. No doubt at all, we've got off to an extraordinarily good start here, despite some of the incidents that have happened since we arrived in this part of the world. Fighting through. Just keep on going. There's no stop, no turning back. It's just straight through. No one been taught to turn back. Everything is just straight through. Just keep on fighting. It's, uh, in the eyes of most of the blokes here, it's something that has to be done. And it's principle the fact that it land was ours to start with. And then they now try to take it from us, and they, nobody will stand for that, really. So you haven't changed your mind at all? No. How about you? No, I'm certainly not. I still don't know. I agree with everything he says. I mean, when we left Blighty two, over two months ago, there was waving flags and everything else, lots of enthusiasm. And, you know, we, we felt the same way. Are you still feeling as strong about it, even yeah. though you've suffered? Well, we've got to do, haven't we? You know, we can't just jack halfway. We've got to carry on. Just no doubts at all? No, not at all. And how about you? Well, it's like he says, I mean, if you've got, you got to do something, you've got to carry it out all the way through. No, he's jacking halfway through. We've got to take Stanley. It's not stopping us now, I don't reckon. But well, it started off as British soil. Uh, Argy's barged in. And we're here to kick them out. And you're the people to do it? Well, or some of the rest of them. Well, basically the same. Let's just get in, get it over with and get home. <laughs> Royal Marine Lieutenant David Stewart told us of his part in the fighting. And then last night, we came up as a company to take this position here. They'd m remove themselves from where we initially had contact. Was that machine gun? That was a machine gun, yes. They'd, they weren't there. The first troop took that. And as we came up, about uh, 200 meters, we came under fire from up here and also further down as well. And then we simply came up as a company. Uh, two troop came up here and took the SF positions, the machine gun positions, which were up here. Uh, we reckon there was about a, a company but as we came up to them, they, they run out, they bugged out. What and kind of uh, what kind of weapons do they have? Is it just machine guns? GPMGs, the same machine guns that we use. Yeah. And you, FNs. You were under fire on the way uh, up, were you? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. What kind of fight did they put up? Uh, initially, heavy fire. And then it, it appeared that as we put down our fire, and we were using the, the 66 and tank weapon, uh, they began to remo move back from there. It appeared that they, leaved, they left sort of diehard chaps up here um, and as we got closer to them they also ran away so in fact we found no one up here at all by the time we got here they'd all gone Roger, out. Can you tell me what he said, Major? 
What he has said is that negotiations will start tonight. Although there appears to be a ceasefire at the moment and the Argentinian forces in the Falklands have appeared to have surrendered, this does not necessarily mean that the forces in the mainland Argentine will necessarily stop fighting. Therefore, we will have normal cap, that is, um, air cover, combat air patrols, and we should take the normal precautions against being caught by surprise or whatever. Okay? Yeah, are there, is, there, is there a white flag flying? There is a white flag flying over Stanley. <laughs> Bloody marvellous. <laughs> Bloody marvellous, he said, and that summed it up for us perfectly. The Paras had made it. They were the first into Stanley, just as they said they would, just as everybody, possibly even the general staff, knew they would. They'd come off Wireless Ridge, quickly across the open valley, and up to the race course at the edge of town before anyone could stop them. As long as people talk of the Falklands campaign, they'll talk of the second Paris. Fort Stanley, the only large village on the islands, had become a symbol for all the forces. So what happened after victory comes next. The Paris remembered their dead in a Thanksgiving service at Stanley Cathedral. The love will not be going home with us. Those who we lost at Goose Green and Darwin, those whom we lost from Mount Longdon on to Radio Ridge. Friday the 18th, at 11.30 that Friday morning, the three Falklanders who had died in the fighting, the only three, were buried in a tiny cemetery overlooking the harbour. Mrs. Sue Whitley, aged 30, and a teacher, Mrs. Doreen Bonner, 46, and Mrs. Mary Goodwin, 81. Their coffins were carried by six Marines and six Paras. The women had died when British artillery bombarded Argentine guns that had been deliberately placed between their houses. Argentine prisoners in the streets Clearing up the rubbish were told by their guards to take off their caps and stand to attention as the coffins passed. And then, unexpectedly, shortly after midday, a formation of Royal Naval seeking helicopters flying a white ensign came overhead us. <laughs> 